Shalom. Welcome to Congregation Yeshua's study on the Torah portion, um, well, the Feast of Shemini Aseret and Simcha Torah, and the last Torah portion, which is called Visot Habaraka. Shemini Aseret means the eight day assembly, and Shemini Aseret means the joy, uh, rejoicing in the Torah, and finally, Visot Habaraka, and this is the blessings. So Shemini Aseret, or the date, the uh, eight day assembly, uh, started on October 2nd um, to October the 3rd. It, la it is the last of the divine appointments mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23. Later, um, when the, the temple was destroyed, the Jews added another celebration on that day. They called it Simcha Torah, or rejoicing in the law or the instructions. We'll be studying the meaning of what that special day will, as it relates to the Messiah and to us believers in Yeshua today. We learned last week that the divine appointments are a shadow that points to Yeshua as noted in Colossians chapter 2. Uh, what we fail to realize that the Apostle Saul was not speaking negatively about observing them, but simply pointing out to us or to the Jewish people uh, the, the fact that the divine appointments points to Yeshua. Now, if, you're, if you follow a shadow, that means you are close to that person. So that when we follow the shadow of, the, 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 of the God's divine appointments, special days, we are actually following the Messiah. That is why we observe them and as commanded that we should keep them forever. As for Simcha Torah, in all, in all the congregation that has a Torah scroll, the congregation dances with it like a bride dances with a bridegroom. Yes, we'll see knowing, unknowingly the Jews have been dancing with their Messiah, the bridegroom, because Yeshua is the living word. Yeshua is the living Torah. Uh, um, God is looking for his remnant that will keep his commandments, including his Sabbaths divine appointments we have the testimony of yeshua in Re as re noted in revelation chapter 12 verse 17 and let us learn and be a remnant rather than the majority that is following not after the truth so if you're new to the channel uh, we are a messianic congregation based in mississauga ontario and we currently are able to still assemble at the paramount fine food center uh, rink A conference rooms B and C at 5500 Rose, Perry, Rose Cherry Place. Uh, our, our morning services starts at 1045. And if you like more information or you'd like to join us, again, uh, it's first come, first serve. There's only limited seats due to the 30% uh, restriction capacity. So email us or send us a text or give us a call. And uh, if you want to know, learn more about why is it important for us to go back to our Jewish roots, this book, this end time book explains it. Um, you can buy this, uh, you can order this directly to Amazon or to Kindle eBooks. Or if you live in Canada, we have limited uh, supplies where you can purchase this for $20 Canadian, includes shipping and handling. So. If you're interested, uh, just again, email us and we will send you a copy of this end time book. So if you're ready, you'll notice that this, the Sabbaths point to or special days, special ho high holy days or the special holy days points to the Messiah. And if you and if and in Leviticus chapter 26, it says there, these are the feasts of the Lord. So if these are the Lord's feasts, would you not want to participate in it? Uh, if you get invited to a party will you, uh, or a celebration, will you not be excited or look forward to it? The same way every week, um, God is calling us to a special, Hashem is calling us for a special day to meet on Shabbat and also on His holy feast days. And you'll notice that... Um, uh, as noted before, our, the, our observation of God's commandments, God's laws, instructions, God's special days is important. Uh, it, it important to us because we are elevating, literally elevating God in our lives. Our obedience to Hashem 
uh, and his commandments elevate him in our lives. He's already elevated, but for us, we are literally elevating him. Um, and you'll notice that um, if you um, if you if you f uh, start from Pesach, Passover, it's, it's a one day celebration followed by seven days of the unleavened bread. And in between the unleavened bread is the first fruits, which is also one day. And then Pentecost or the Shabbat, the, the day that he, uh, Hashem uh, appeared before the children of Israel and gave them the Torah. And then, and then the, 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 the first three happens in the spring, and then on summer is Shavuot. And in the fall feast, we have uh, two days of Yom Teruah, and again, one day of Yom Kippur. And look at this, it's, almost, it's like a mirror. One to seven days of Sukkot, seven days of Sukkot, and then one day of Shemini Aseret. If you'll see there, it's a perfect, perfect mirror of the times of the Messiah. And we're gonna see that, uh, uh, on his first coming, uh, which is fulfilled on the first f uh, first f uh, five feasts, our first four feasts, uh, he came as a suffering servant, which is uh, Ben Joseph. And then on the final three or four feasts, he will be coming as Messiah Ben David or uh, Mashiach, the king. Uh, last week we said that Yeshua was born on the Feast of uh, uh, Tabernacles, or what we call uh, Shukot. And, uh, and we'll see it here tonight, today, that he was born on the evening of uh, the, the start of the Feast of Tabernacles. That means that um, on the eighth day, which is the, which is the eighth day assembly, is the day that he, got, he was circumcised. And you'll see here in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33 to 36, it says there, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. There shall be no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer offerings made by fire. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. So this is what we call now Shemini Aseret, the eighth day assembly. Now, uh, what happens on the eighth day? So if you remember in Leviticus chapter 23, it says there that, uh, that it says here you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. So it's the, it's the feast where you are commanded to rejoice. That's why, um, you know, in Luke chapter 2, we, we see that the angels uh, told the shepherds it's, it's, it's a time of great joy because he's, he's pointing to the, uh, to the fact that it's the feast of uh, tabernacles and you shall keep your, the statutes forever in your generation. Now, in Luke chapter 23, verse 39 to... Um, um, again, it's talking about uh, the, the feast. Um, and then look at this. In Luke chapter 2, on the country nearby, there were some shepherds spending the night in the field. So uh, they were um, the beginning of the feast, guarding their flocks. They were outside uh, in, in the Feast of Shavuot or the Feast of Pe uh, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. You are encouraged to stay in, a, to, to build a booth or build a tent, build a Sukkot. Um, a tent and spend as much uh, time in the uh, in the Sukkot as you can, including uh, sleeping on them. So the the so the shepherds were out in their sukkah, and then the Shekinah of Adonai shone around them. They were terrified, and the angel said to them, "Don't be afraid, because I br I'm here announcing to you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. This very day, at the town of David, there was born." Uh, to you, a deliverer who is the Messiah, the Lord. So he's, he's the angels are announcing the birth of the Messiah on that day. So the beginning of the day of the tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, um, in Leviticus chapter 2, 12, you see here that, uh, uh, that tell the people of Israel, if a woman conceives and gives birth to a boy, she will be unclean for seven days. So for seven days, she will be unclean. 
with the same uncleanliness as in Hernida. In other words, uh, the same seven days restriction for a, a woman who had her menstrual period. She will be unclean for seven days. Then there's a pause for one day because on the eighth day, the baby's foreskin is to be circumcised. So on the eighth day, the baby is to be circumcised um, and uh, the Torah or God is allowing the mother to be part of that ceremony. And then after the day, and then uh, um, and then then what happens is uh, the, for 30 days she will be unclean again. Uh, and then after the 30 day 30 days is over, and then she is to bring a lamb of the first year or a burnt off uh, for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a dove for a sin offering at the entrance of the tent to the kohen or to the priest. Now look at this, verse 8. But if she can't afford a lamb, she is to take two doves or two young pigeons, one for the burnt offering, which uh, uh, will, will replace the lamb, and the other one for the sin offering. And the, the priest will make atonement for her, and she will be clean. So, uh, so uh, you understand, and, and you, 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 you ask your question, why um, is God making the woman unclean for 30 days you ask yourself so if, if she's unclean she's not uh, required to come to the temple she's not required to participate and and you know what that is uh, that's god's mercy why because god is giving the woman like a maternity leave you know you are you just gave birth and you are uh, exempt from your duties to come to services you just stay home rest Take care of the baby. Now you look, look, look at this on Luke chapter two. So, um, so on the Yeshua was born on the start of the feast of the tabernacle. Guess what? So on the eighth day is what is Shemini Aseret. So it's the eighth day assembly. So at verse twenty one on the eighth day, when it was time for his Brit Milah in in English, it's called circumcision. He was given the name Yeshua. So what name was he given? He was given the name Yeshua. It was not Jesus. It was Yeshua, which was the angel called him before his conception. So God named his son. Um, so who can name who can name your children? It's only the father. So the father named him Yeshua. So who are we to change his name? We cannot change his name. That's what God named his son. Who are we to change it? It will be disrespectful uh, for an earthly father uh, or an earthly person to try to change the person's name, which was given by her or his father, parent, right? So in the same way, we, we have no right to change his name. So when the time came and then, so this, this happened. Uh, so after 30 days, with a time for her purification according to the Torah of Moshe, which we just read, Luke chapter 16, or Luke chapter 12, they took him to Yerushalayim to present him to Adonai. So this is the second time he's being presented. First time on his circumcision, and then 30 days later, as it is written, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to Adonai, and you shall offer a sacrifice, a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as required by the Torah. Why? Because Miriam and y Yosef were not rich couple. They they don't have the gold, frankincense, and mirror that was uh, uh, that uh, we are led to believe, right? Because they cannot even afford a lamb. They can only afford doves, two doves or two young pigeons. So, um, so you can imagine, um, you know, uh, you see the pattern here. The pattern here is on the eighth day is the child circumcised. So uh, Jeremiah is talking about the circumcision of the heart. Why? Because when you circumcise uh, the male uh, child, uh, the very, you're exposing the, the most sensitive part of the human anatomy or the male anatomy. Therefore, it is sensitive to touch or to feeling. And, and that's what uh, the circumcision of the heart is really is, is is trying to convey to each and every one of us we are big when we circumcise our hearts to god we are sensitive not only to his word but his to his instructions to his commands right in jeremiah chapter 4 he said to judah break uh, circumcise yourself to the lord and take away the foreskins of your heart 
So he was rebuking the children of Israel. And in Jeremiah 31, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel in the house of Judah. Actually, this was quoted in, uh, in Hebrews as well. Not according to your covenant I made your fathers, which I, when I took them out of the hand in the land of Egypt, which, which my covenant though they broke, although I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this shall be my covenant I will make in the house of Israel after, after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts. So God has never and will never do away with his instruction, his command, because that is that is the very foundation. That is the word. Yeshua is the word. Yeshua is the Torah. You cannot take away God from the word. It's like, can you remove white from rice? You can't. You cannot separate the white from the rice because the rice is white. It's the same way that the, the, the living word, God, Hashem, our Heavenly Father, He is the word. He is the word. He is the living word. He was with God. He, was, he is God. And we cannot uh, do away. We can never do away. Yeshua never came to do away because it is as if He said, I am doing away with me. You, how can God do, how can we do away with God? He is the living word. Um, so you understand why um, that Torah has never been uh, an issue. You know, we we are all saved by grace. The Jews believe they, 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 we are only saved by grace through faith. That's the same uh, belief as we believers in Yeshua. And yet uh, our, 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 our following of uh, the Torah is, is really God's grace for us. Like I said last time, you know, God has given us all these things that we can do. Why? So that we can do things for Him and get out of trouble. Um, you know, if you love your children, you will keep them busy. Why? Why do you want to keep them busy? So that they will, they will, they, they will not have idle time to think of, to get in trouble, right? So you, you give your children, you, you, in, you, you engulf them with activities, engulf them with, uh, with f tasks to do when they get home, um, so that they will not just sit around and watch TV or, 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 or get involved in gangs and all that. So the same way uh, Hashem's mercy and love for us, He has given us all these, these commands and instructions so that we can, we can be busy doing His work and getting out of trouble. So that's how you, you want to look at um, God's instruction to us. It's His loving kindness and mercy for each and every one of us. So I want to show you this, again, this 7-8 pattern because uh, this is very re relevant to Shemini Aseret, the timing of it. And like I said, we have the weekly, the daily, uh, and the weekly Sabbaths. What do we do? So day one to day six, we we participate in secular or, or worldly activities, our work or our schoolwork. And then on the Sabbath, we study the Torah. And then the eighth day is a, a new week. On a Shemitah year, God said for um, uh, every year you may, um, you may sow and reap your harvest. But on the seventh year, the land will rest. Therefore, you will rest. So for one year... Uh, by the way, on the sixth year, if you look, if you study the Torah, you see that on the sixth year, God blesses them three folds. Why? So that they'll have food on the sixth year, they will have food on the seventh year, and while they're planting on the eighth year, they will have food so that on the ninth year, they will have something to eat. So God blesses them threefold, but because of their selfishness, uh, you know, uh, God blessed them three times, threefold, and yet they did not take advantage of the year of paid vacation to study the Torah. And then uh, for, from daily to yearly and now for the millennia. So God said that mankind will, will work for 6,000 years. On the 7th, we're, we're going to have a, a Sabbath rest. And we're going to see that, that uh, it's an opportunity for us to learn to be the Priest that God will in Re, in Revelation chapter two and Re, uh, chapter one and Revelation chapter five, it says there that Yeshua will present us to the Father as His priest. 
So how how do how when when will that happen? When will that learning? When will that teaching? How will we know to to be the priest if not through the Torah? So that's why for a thousand years Yeshua will teach us. We will learn under him. We will learn and see what it means to be a priest. And then when we are ready, those that are ready, those that have circumcised their heart, they're ready to spend eternity with God. This is the divine pattern. It's never changed and it will never change. So uh, look at Micah chapter 4. This is a messianic prophecy. This, is, uh, this, will, this has not happened yet, but it will happen very soon in our lifetime. Uh, bless uh, Baruch Hashem. Many Gentiles will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Adonai, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and he, we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion will go for the Torah, and the word of Adonai from Yerushalayim. He will judge between many peoples, and arbitrate for many nations far away. They, then they will hammer their swords into plow, plow blades, and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not rise, raise forge to each other. At each other, they will no longer learn war. And this is this is a prophecy uh, that we will see in the messianic reign, uh, the millennial reign of Yeshua. You see here in Zechariah chapter fourteen, you will not realize that there is going to be two battles. The first battle is when Satan is bound, and he will be bound for a thousand years. And then when he is unleashed, there's going to be a final battle. We're going to see that uh, in Shemini Aseret. We'll see that. But see here, finally, everyone remaining. So in, on the first battle, when Satan is bound, uh, may, there will be people who will remain, who will be alive during the time of the, the Messianic reign of the Yeshua. Everyone remaining from all the nations that came to attack Yerushalayim will go every year to worship the king, Adonai Shabbat and keep the festival of Sukkot. So, so you see here that, yes, there will be uh, 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 people with their, with their, uh, with their current state, uh, and there will be people that will be in their glorified body. So you see here, Revelation chapter 20, this, and, he see, and he sees the dragon and the ancient serpent, who is the devil, Satan, uh, the adversary, and chained him up for a thousand years. So the, the Satan, without the first battle, Satan will be bound. Uh, he threw him into the abyss, locked it, and sealed it for him, and he could not deceive the nations until the thousand years were over. So we're going to have a Sabbath rest from the enemy. After that, he, he, that, he, and that, he will be set free for a little while. Then I saw the thrones of those seated on them receive authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded. So it's important for us to, to stand firm, testifying about Yeshua and proclaiming the word of, 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 of God, Hashem. Also those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and not received the mark in their foreheads and on their hands. So be careful not to receive the mark of the beast. They came to life. So we will come to life and rule with the Messiah for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were over. This is the first resurrection. It says here, verse 6, look at this. Blessed the holy is anyone who is part of the first resurrection. So we, we, you, we better aim to be in the first resurrection. So that the second death has no power over us. Look at this. What happens? What will? What? Who? Will, when we we are resurrected, uh, they will be kohanim. This is the Hebrew word for priests of God and of the Messiah, and they will rule with Him for a thousand years. So that's, so that's what will happen on the on the on the seven thousand year reign. So here, um, it's a very synopsis uh, um, that uh, you know in the third day the Torah was given. Uh, the first cleansing, the fourth day Yeshua was born, died, and resurrected. The sixth day Yeshua returned to save Israel and set his millennial kingdom. Zechariah chapter 14. On the seventh day, 7,000 millennial reign of Yeshua, Yeshua will teach the Torah to believers that love him in the final battle with Satan. The final cleansing will happen. And those that are ready with circumcised heart, the new heaven and the new earth, the true believers, that will, that will have their hearts circumcised, will rejoice in the Torah, rule and reign with Him 
for eternity. Look at this. So this is the, the new heaven, uh, Second Peter chapter 3, uh, prophesied that uh, one day is like a thousand years to the Lord. However, verse 10, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On the day of the heavens will disappear with a roar and the elements will melt, disintegrate and the earth and everything in it will be burned up. So this is the final battle that will take place. That day will bring on destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in heat. But we, following along with his promise, wait for the new heavens and the new earth. So Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 and 10, this is, the, this is what Peter saw. Uh, when a thousand years are over, the adversary will be set free from his prison and he will go out to deceive the nation. So remember, there will be nations uh, that will be still alive, that will, that will thrive, that will, that will repopulate the earth and the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. So you see a duplication of the first battle of Armageddon. They're going to do it again. They're gonna, they will not learn from the history. They will not learn from their past. They will gather in battle. Their number is countless as the sand of the seashore. Why? Because they have not learned. They have not put Torah in their hearts. They have rejected God. You see, if you reject Torah, you, you, you're literally rejecting the word. You're rejecting God. And they came up over the, uh, up over in the breadth of, breadth of the land and surrounded the camp of God's people in the city he loves, talking about Jerusalem. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. The adversary who had been deceived has been hurled to the lake of fire and sulfur and the beast and the false prophet were. They will be tormented day and night forever. Revelation chapter 20 again, continuing verse 11 into 15. Then what happened? Then the judgment will happen. I saw a great white throne, one sitting on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence like a Torah scroll, and no place was found for them. Verse 12, and I saw dead, both great and small, standing in front of the throne. And the books were open, and another book was opened, the book of life. The dead were judged from what was written in the book according to what has been done. The sea gave up the dead of it, the dead and shoal gave up the dead in them, and they were judged each according to what he had done. See? Then death and shoal were hurled to the lake of fire, the second death, the lake of fire. Anyone whose name was not written, found in the book of life, was hurled with Satan there on the lake of fire. Wow. So, um, then here's Revelation chapter 1, and this is what Peter saw, the new heaven and the new earth, the old heaven, the old earth had passed away. The sea is no longer there. And I saw the, the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And, and see, I heard a loud voice. See that God, Shekinah, is with mankind, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and he himself, God with them, will be their God. He will wipe away all tears in their eyes. There will no longer any death. There will no longer be any mourning, crying, and pain. This is the old order. The old order has passed away. So, so this is this is the picture of eternity now. So the eight day assembly is symbolic of that 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 gathering. That's why the feast of tabernacle is really uh, the festival where we gather. We gather the souls. We gather. And uh, God will separate the sheep from the wolf, and uh, and and, uh, and 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 the and judgment day, and then uh, those that are that have circumcised their hearts will join Him in eternity. Amen. So, uh, in Simcha Torah, rejoicing in the Torah, um, in um, in in many uh, synagogues where they have a Torah scroll, they would un they would. Since they, they, they are reading the last chapters of Deuteronomy, they will open the scroll and they will parade uh, the, the scroll like this. Uh, in this case, they would, they would um, unwrap the scroll and e each one uh, get to see for themselves the, the Torah, the, the, the written word, the written, the written word. Um, and they will... Um, and they will scroll it back, and they would uh, literally look at this. They're, they're literally dancing, 
and rejoicing in the law, in the instruction. Why? Because in Jewish thought, like I said last time, that it's never, um, it's never in, their, in their belief that the Messiah will come and take away their Torah. Um, that's, not a, um, that's not a Jewish uh, teaching. Um, the Greek teaching is that Yeshua came to free them from the law. The law is not a curse. The law is a blessing. God's instructions is a blessing. You know, uh, the Romans chapter 5 or chapter 6 is, is misunderstood because Yeshua uh, uh, um, died to uh, break the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? The curse of the law is sin and debt. That is the second commandment. It said, on the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So Yeshua broke that curse of death. Why? Because now, because of his uh, sacrifice, we will no longer die. Amen? So that was the, the law. Um, that's why um, Rabbi Paul said that the law is a, uh, the, 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 the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? The curse of the law is the result of man's uh, sin is that is death. That is what Yeshua conquered. But the law is not a curse. The law is a blessing. That's why they're rejoicing in the law instruction. Because why? Because if you are following God's Instruction that means you are his covenant people, that means you are his bride. And uh, if you want to be the bride of the Messiah, then rejoice in his instructions. That is his covenant, that is his word. We are to, to keep it, to observe it, to live it. Amen. And what's interesting about the Torah scroll, um, for thousands of years, um, they have created this. Uh, um, clothing they literally put a crown they put a priestly garment on it in fact they put a breastplate of the high priest and um, and if you open the Torah scroll you see that it is made out of lamb skin and what they do is they, they put a special glue to attach each of the skin so that they can write the word of God on each of the pages of the Torah scroll and the Torah scroll is impaled with two sticks. Two sticks representing, look at this. So the, the crown represents the king Messiah and the priestly Messiah. See, this is, the, this is the title of Yeshua. He's the priest and the king. And look at this. The Torah scroll is impaled in two sticks. Yeshua was impaled in two sticks. Yeshua is the Lamb of God. The Torah scroll is made out of the lamb skin. The Torah scroll contains the Word of God. Yeshua is the living Word of God. So literally, you see that the Torah scroll is really a representation of the, the, the suffering Messiah who is their king and priest. And unknowingly, for thousands of years, they've been dancing with their bride, bridegroom, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go into that, the, the Torah portion, Besot Habaraka. And in Besot Habaraka, um, uh, Moses is about to die. And then Moses said that there has not risen a prophet since Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. But in the earlier uh, prophecy, um, God said that in the last days, he will raise a prophet like Moses. And he said, and the children of Israel, he said, you will listen to him, right? So, um, um, and he says here in verse 11, in all signs and wonders, which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and all his servants. And we're going to see, um, I don't have time to show you, but there are many parallels between Yeshua and Moses, and all, including all the miracles that he performed. But in Luke chapter 24, this is after the resurrection of Yeshua, Yeshua um, um, showed himself to two of uh, his followers named Cleophas, um, 
uh, one of them is named Cleophas, and Yeshua talked and discussed. Yeshua himself came up and walked with them, but something kept them from recognizing him. Verse 11, 17, he asked them, what are you talking about with each other as you are walking along? They stopped short, their faces downcast, and one of them named Cleophas answered, are you the only person staying in Jerusalem that doesn't know the things that have been going on these last few days? And Yeshua said, what things? He asked them. And he said to him, the things about Yeshua the Nazarite. He was a prophet, proved it by the things he did. So they're, they're, they're acknowledging him as the prophet like Moses that God sent before all the people. And then, and then, and then he said, and uh, I'm, I'm going to fast forward. You can read it yourself. Verse 25, he said to them, Foolish people, Yeshua is speaking to them, so unwillingly to put your trust in everything the prophet spoke. Don't, didn't the Messiah have to die like this before entering his glory? Then starting with Moshe and all the prophets, they're talking about the Torah and the prophets, he explained to them the things that can be found throughout the Tanakh. That the Tanakh is what we call the Old Testament concerning himself. So you see here that the gospel is, is written in the Old Testament. Because remember, the New Testament was not written until 200 years after the resurrection of Yeshua. So the Tanakh is the source of scripture for thousands of years. Now, um, as Moses is about to die, look at this, uh, uh, verse 18, A prophet will the Lord thy God raise up unto thee in the midst of, the, of thy brethren. So you see here that the, um, uh, the Messiah had to be a Jewish person. Look at this. It says, he says he's going to raise up unto you in the midst of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken, you shall listen. So he's not going to be a Gentile person. He's going to be a Jewish person. Verse 18, I will raise him up as a prophet from among your brethren, and, uh, 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 like unto thee. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak them all that I have commanded him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever not hearken to my, to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Verse Matthew, remember that in the mountain of transfiguration, Yeshua, was, uh, Peter was still speaking. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So Yeshua um, clearly, uh, the Father, um, um, is uh, acknowledging that he is the one sent. Amen. Now, um, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, I know this is the last week's Torah portion, but um, it's interesting that when Moses was asked by God to, to climb the mount, mountain Ar Abarim where, where he's about to die, remember um, Moses uh, was not sick, he didn't have COVID-19 or he was not suffering from any disease. Uh, in fact, um, he was uh, his eyes has not dimmed, his strength has not diminished. Um, but it was time for him, for God to take him. And look at this word, this this Hebrew word here, this Hebrew phrase. And the Lord spoke to Moses that self same day. Um, this phrase that self same day, Bazum Ha'avom Haza, on that self same day. Um, uh, what's interesting about this phrase is you can only find this three times in the Bible, uh, in the Torah. The first time you see it is in Genesis chapter 7, verse 13. Again, uh, this is the day when uh, uh, Mo, uh, Noah and his uh, three sons and their wives entered the ark. It says there, verse 13, in the self-same day, entered Noah, Shem, Ham, Jepheth, sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and their three wives and his sons with them unto the ark. So on the self-same day, so that uh, was in, uh, uh, the second time it appears uh, in the self-same self day was when Abraham circumcised uh, Ishmael, his son, and all the male of his household. 
So uh, in Genesis chapter 17, verse 26, talks about on the self-same day. Um, and then finally, you can find this in Exodus chapter 12, verse 41, when the children of Israel left Egypt. Again, that phrase, on that self-same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So what is the significance of this? Uh, why uh, why is God connecting these three stories to the time when Moses is about to climb uh, and 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 about to die, and and the children of Israel will never see him again? What's the connection? Well, um, that that phrase on that self same day can also be translated as on that fateful day, meaning it began on that self same day. It end on that day. Something happened. In other words, there was something that changed or is about to change that same fateful day. So if you go back to this, the story of Noah, what happened? Well, on that same self same day when Noah and his sons entered the ark, a new world was created. The the old world, the 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 sinful world was destroyed. Everything uh, that they knew. Uh, the people that they knew were all gone. So the, a new world was created on that self same day when Noah and uh, his sons and their wives entered the ark. In the case of Abraham, what, what happened there? In the case of Abraham, when Abraham, uh, uh, God changed his name and then uh, and, and they entered into a covenant of, uh, with God, his, his family, and going forward, a new covenant will be formed. He said, On the eighth day shall you circumcise all the male in your household. So Isaac was the first uh, to be circumcised on the eighth day. So so you see here, a new covenant was formed, meaning God is going to deal with them in a different way now. Uh, it's through a, a covenant, um, and it's going to be a conditional covenant, as we can see later on as fulfilled by the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. And finally, when Israel left Egypt on that self-same day, what happened? A new nation was born. So God said, okay, from, from the covenant I made with Abraham now, I'm going to make a marriage covenant with the nation of Israel. So what does that got to do with Moses? Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, it's talking about... Uh, a relationship with God now. He said, you know, um, he, you know, God is saying, you know, you, you don't need a prophet, you don't need the prophets to tell you, you don't need um, the rabbis to tell you, the, your pastor to tell you, because it is not in heaven, God is saying, it's not in heaven that you should say, who would go up to heaven and bring it to us to make us hear it, that we may do it. In other words, God is saying, you know, you don't, you, know, uh, you don't have to go to heaven to learn these things because God has given this to you. Neither is beyond the sea. God is saying you don't have to cross the sea that you, you would say, who shall go over the sea for us to bring it to us that we may hear it and we may do it. Verse 14, but the word is, the word is very nigh unto you in thy mouth, in thy heart, that you may do it. God is saying, my relationship with you is just a heartbeat away. I need your obedience. I see I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. So you, you, God said, my relationship, our relationship is based on your choices. I cannot make those choices for you. You have to want it. You want to uh, make it yourself. Uh, in, the, in verse 16, in that... I command you this day to love the Lord your God and walk in His ways and keep His commandments and His statutes and His ordinances. Then you shall live and multiply and the Lord thy God which shall bless you in the land where you go and possess it. So so what happened? So on, on when Moses died, what happened? Well, God is saying, you don't need Moses anymore. You can have, an, you can have a new intimate relationship with Hashem and it starts with you. You don't need Moses anymore. 
because God is going to live in each and every one of us. Amen. So as we end uh, the Torah cycle, there's 54 Torah cycles and we've completed it. But it's by tradition that we recite this phrase. And I just want to give you an explanation of what this phrase, kasak, kasak, benit, kasek, really means. What are we really saying here? So when we, when we end the Torah cycle, it is by tradition that we recite this. And what we, what we are really saying is that uh, when we do the declaration, when we do the declaration, what we are saying is kasak, really, uh, kasak has many meanings. It means to be attached to something. It means to support. It means to preserve, to hold fast. It means to be strong or to be strengthened, to be courageous, to retain, to keep, to grab hold. And finally, it also means to encourage, to prove, or to be helpful. So when we make this declaration, what we are really saying is, God, we will attach ourselves to what we have read in the scriptures. We will retain and keep the words that we have heard. We will let the Holy Word strengthen and preserve us, be supportive for our lives and the lives of our loved ones. We are also saying that the word of the Torah, we will be courageous for they are part of our life. And finally, we are saying that we will study scriptures with purpose in our lives. Reading the Bible without purpose is like riding a boat without a destination and uh, allowing the sea to carry us adrift. So if you are ready, we are going to declare it together. Kasak, kasak, venit kasek. Be strong, be strong, and may you be strengthened. Amen. So with that, we want to thank you for joining us. And to conclude tonight, we said that we need to love God first and set our hearts in all the words and commandments that, so that all these things will have meaning and mean more to us because we love God. It is not a vain th thing as it is our life, your life. Will you choose life today? So Father, as I uh, end this uh, Torah cycle and we begin anew in uh, Genesis next week, Bereshit, I pray for each and every listener, each and every household, each and every family. Father, I just, um, in unity with my brothers and sisters, um, I declare... Um, your divine protection, your divine provision, your divine pro provision for each and every person and each and every household and, and uh, for those that are uh, looking for opportunities. I, in the name of Yeshua, I declare doors open for you that no one can shut, that you will, you will seek what you are finding and may the, and the favor of blessing of Yeshua be upon you in your search. And uh, you, will, you will land a job that you, will, that you are looking for in Yeshua's whole name. And for those that are um, sick, um, and I, I declare healing and strength to Yeshua, the blood of Yeshua. And I thank you, Father, for each and every listener. May you bless each household pray that you will uh, preserve us and keep us and keep the hunger of the truth of your word be upon us we ask in Yeshua our Messiah amen amen so if you if you are again uh, new to our channel please subscribe uh, like us and send the links to your family and friends uh, and also uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can email, you can uh, send a text, you can uh, post your questions. Um, you know, I may not know all the answers, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, uh, together seek the truth in God's Word. So, um, um, 
the Lord told Moses to tell Aaron to bless his people, to mark them. So you are blessed and marked today. Yivarekaka, Yehovah bishmareka, Ya'er Yehovah banavaleka bihuneka, Yisha Yehovah banavaleka, Viasehem leka, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Peace in the name of Yeshua, our Shar Shalom, Prince of Peace. Go in peace. Shalom and God bless you all. See you again next time.